like to take the opportunity to um, welcome you all here tonight. Um, this is our part of our small business series. Tonight we're going to be talking about record keeping and we are very lucky to have Dana Dowdell from Boss um, Consulting. Um, and so I would, with that, I would like to turn it over to Dana. Hello. <clears throat> um, thank you so much for being here. So um, as Maria mentioned, my name is Dana Dowdell. I own Boss Consulting HR, and we're a small boutique HR consulting business based out of Norwich. Um, so we help small businesses from everything to um, from hiring employees to firing employees and everything in between. And so a lot of my business and a lot of what I do in human resources is built on record keeping and keeping good documentation around employees. So um, that's likely why I got asked to do this one. Um, I'm a big compliance junkie. So, um, but yeah, we're gonna cover record keeping. So we'll do um, an agenda and then quick introductions and then we will kind of jump into the essentials of the records that you need to keep and why you need to keep them as um, a small business owner. So the first is to explain and go through the concept of record keeping. You know, why is it important to keep records? What types of records do you want to keep? And then also we're going to identify some record keeping best practice rules and tools that'll help you stay organized. And then all um, we'll talk about how the practice rules and tools will work a little bit. And then what are the benefits of record keeping? How can keeping good records help you? And then how can keeping bad records hurt you? Um, and then, of course, just kind of explain record keeping at a, at a high level. Um, and we also will talk, in addition to just general tools, there are some software products as well um, that will help kind of keep you organized that we'll talk about. So. so is there anything that you want to know or specifically learn about record keeping? Like, is there anything in your particular situations that you struggle with or um, you want to make sure that we cover or you want me to just dive right in and we can get get through it I, I guess I'm actually a sole proprietorship so I guess okay. taxes anything about taxes would be helpful for me okay all right perfect have you guys gone through the tax class yet no okay so we'll we'll talk about it in like a high level Alicia but the tax class will probably be helpful in terms of what you need to do so so um, record keeping, when you are a small business, it, it doesn't matter how or what type of business you have. So whether you work in manufacturing or whether you work in some type of Etsy store or you have um, a service-based business, and it doesn't matter what type of business, whether you're a sole proprietor or you decide to do a partnership or a corporation, there's steps that you have to take within each of those business formations that you want to make sure that you're keeping really good records for. Um, you know, sole proprietors or like single member LLCs, the record keeping requirements are a little bit less of a burden than if you're some type of partnership or corporation. But it doesn't matter if you're a sole proprietor or a corporation or a partnership you have to make sure that you're keeping really good records. And it starts with that business formation. So I started my business as a sole proprietor. I was not an LLC. I did not do any formal um, you know, business filings with the state or anything like that. I simply went to my town hall and I did a DBA um, registration. I think I paid five dollars um, and then that was it. That was all I had to do. But it was still important that I kept that record and, and record of what I paid because that then becomes an expense and that then becomes something that I can um, use in case I get audited for any reason. I mentioned in the beginning that you know, I work in human resources and a lot of my business is around documentation. We kind of 
um, operate under the guise of if it if it's not documented, it didn't happen. Um, so it keeps me gainfully employed that not a lot gets documented when it should be. But um, you know, as a business owner, you want to make sure you want to operate under retaining documentation and retaining records for when you get audited. It's not so much an if, it's kind of a for when you get audited. And it's much better to have your records in good shape and in good condition and to know where they stand for when that time comes um, than to be scrambling to get receipts, scrambling to get W-9s, whatever it may be that you're being audited on, um, it doesn't look good when you have to scramble. So that's one of the primary reasons that you want to keep really good records is when you start a business, you are subject to so many different types of audits that you want to make sure you're prepared for. So what is record keeping? Record keeping is an orderly and disciplined practice of storing your business, business records. And it, it doesn't have to be complicated. Um, I think... I, I know I experienced this when I started a small business is there's lots of, sorry, I have a cat that's like tormenting my dog. So it's probably going to come across the screen soon. Um, but when I started a small business, there was a lot of information coming at, at me. <laughs> I'm so sorry. Um, coming at me, uh, you know, in terms of tools and resources and, you know, there will be someone that tells you that you absolutely have to get this electronic medical, uh, electronic filing system because it's going to make your life so much easier. You as a business owner have to decide what system works best for you. So it can be simple. It can be a filing cabinet with manila file folders. And if that works for you and it keeps your mind you know, simple and organized and your files simple and organized, great. If, if you want to go a more complicated route or a more uh, complex route and do some type of online system, that also works. It's going to be different depending on your business. And then it provides fast retrieval of records. So when someone has a question about a certain business event or when you get audited or when you have to show your tax accountant that you did a certain contribution to your IRA, there's a record of it. And then it should always be updated on an ongoing basis. Um, I remember I, when I was younger, my father was friends with an attorney. He was like really good friends with an attorney. And anytime you would go to his office, there was just records everywhere, records everywhere. And I know in his mind he had, you know, it made sense to him, but he never went through and got rid of stuff that he didn't need anymore. So he never purged things that weren't relevant or timely anymore. So you do want to constantly be looking at your process and making sure that you're updating it, that you're keeping the records that you need to keep, that you can purge the records that you don't need anymore. And then, you know, looking at your process too. As you get through years of business, the, the way that you keep records might change. So it doesn't have to be the same way year over year. Um, and just to remember to keep good records, both personal and business, that's really important, particularly as you grow. So <clears throat> um, why is record keeping important? Again, we talk about like the legal component and the compliance component. It's really important to keep records for from a business operational standpoint. Um, I know in my business, I have to file a couple different things throughout the year that are unique to my business that I don't get email reminders that I have to file. So it's helpful to know and keep records of certain certifications that I need to file with the state or certain you know, tax documents or quarterly payments or whatever it may be. It's also really helpful when you get into the planning phase of business, um, particularly around getting things like insurance or getting things like a business banking account. If you have good records, that becomes that much easier. 
um, the legal components of business. So, you know, you're going to be depending on the type of business that you have, you're going to have contracts, you're going to have service agreements. So making sure that you're retaining those contracts and storing them in, appropriate, in an appropriate way so that if there is a contract dispute, you can go back to it and say, this is the terms of our contract. I have it right here. Licenses and permits. Again, it's gonna depend on the type of business that you're doing, um, but your business may require ongoing licenses or online ongoing permits or certifications. Um, when you file a, um, LLC or any type of business formation in the state of Connecticut, you have to do an annual annual report every year. And so, you know, these types of things, a lot of times are recurring requirements and recurring obligations that when you keep good records, you know, they're coming, you can plan for it, you can budget for it, you can make time to make sure it happens. Um, and then up my alley is payroll and personnel files. <laughs> So when you have employees, um, you have a, an extra set of requirements in terms of record keeping, in terms of how you store your employee information, how long you store it, how long you keep payroll records for, and what type of payroll records you have. And then for tax purposes. So, you know, what's, what do they say is certain death and taxes? Um, it doesn't stop <laughs> and it doesn't get any better or any easier when you have a business. So, you know, you want to make sure that you have good records associated with what types of taxes you have paid. Are you paying income tax to the federal government and the state? Is your business subject to sales and use tax? Is your business subject to that 10 cent um, plastic bag tax? You know, what types of records are you keeping around those taxes that you have to pay? So tracking the details of your business operations. Um, this might look like customer records or sales records. Um, you know, you, I, I have a, a podcast and uh, we talked to a gentleman recently who actually does like business exit planning. And so he helps businesses that are robust and established and um, figure out what do you need to do when you're ready to exit the business, when you're ready to sell it or transfer ownership or whatever it may be. And so keeping good records from start to finish from the very beginning of your business to the very end. Who have your major customers been? Who have you gotten the most sales from? You know, these are all important details that you're going to want to retain in business because you never know when you're going to need to tap into those pieces of information. Um, and then general correspondence. I like to keep everything in email. So if I'm communicating with a client, or if you're communicating with a customer, it might be important for you to make sure that you're retaining those lines of communication. Um, you know, I've been burned before more so in like an HR perspective where a conversation was had with an employee and they say it didn't happen or they say no one told them about it. So keeping correspondence for a long period of time in case you ever need to go back to it is really important as well. If you're the type of business that uh, has physical products, you may have to keep inventory. So keeping good records of what your starting inventory is, what your ending inventory is, and how that relates to your sales records can be really helpful. What's nice about keeping good records from a business operations standpoint as well is it can help with any like bleeding and, and, and loss prevention. Um, so it allows you to, to essentially audit your business operations. So if you're looking at your customer records or your sales records and they don't match up with inventory, maybe there's an issue somewhere um, that you want to look at as an owner. So I think with record keeping the most kind of, no matter what system you decide to use, I think what's most important is that 
you're, you're intentional about it. So, you, you know, if you, QuickBooks is not, inex, you know, it's not inexpensive, it's not expensive. It depends on what, what level you get, but it's only as good as how much you use it. You know, so if you, if you get it and you're not using it, then, then you're, you're wasting your money in a sense. So you have to be really intentional about how making time for that record keeping is, is really important. Maybe you do it, you know, first of the month and the 15th of the month, you schedule an hour or two on your calendar to make sure that your receipts are all in order and they're assigned to the transactions. Or, you know, maybe you hire a bookkeeper. Um, that's what I had to do is I, I did not have the bandwidth to go through my QuickBooks transactions. And so I finally hired a bookkeeper because I just didn't have the bandwidth for it. So, you know, you have to, no matter what system you use or whatever platform you decide, you want to be intentional about it because if you don't, then it's, it's not helping you at all if you're, if you're paying money for a system. So uh, record retention is really important. Um, and the length of time that you have to keep a particular document depends on the document. So this is just kind of a helpful chart um, in terms of how long you should keep certain parts of your business. So some of the HR and people related items, um, we recommend you know three, two to three years there are some caveats to that. Um, so sometimes like workers comp files, you might wanna, I recommend you keep them for as long as you possibly can, particularly if you operate in Connecticut. Um, so personnel and employee related stuff, but two to three years. Um, contracts and inventory data, four years. Um, insurance records, five years, checks and payables, five years, payroll records, six years, and then your annual statements, anything related to retirement plans, any auditor reports, kind of like those big, serious types of records, I would say, um, you know, keep them as long as you, as you possibly can. And I think what's important to recognize too is that these types of big documents, these auditor reports, these annual statements, you know, they don't have to take up paper space or cabinet space in your filing system. There are businesses or there's, there's services out there that will scan them all in for you electronically. So if you have, you know, let's say you've been a nonprofit for 30 years and you have uh, 30 years of annual reports, um, you know, you can hire a company that will take all those annual reports and make them electronic for you and then you can store them that way. So they don't always have to be taking up space in your, in your brain and in your filing cabinet. So some record keeping tools. Um, again, it doesn't have to be complicated. Um, you will, you'll get thrown a bunch of different recommendations for systems and platforms that you need to use. Um, I find particularly around like the, um, like the business planning phase, like how you spend your days. People are like, use Trello, use Asana, use um, all of these different platforms. And they're, again, they're only as good as you use them. So so you can use simple paper tools. I know a lot of people have success with a simple to-do list or a, you know, a, a paper calendar. Um, it is good to have some type of like tickler system. So when I say a tickler system, it's a way for you to be reminded of or notified of certain records that either have to be updated or purged or renewed. Um, and that can be as simple as your, you know, calendar and just setting reminders. You can also use a computer system. So again, the, the Google suite or the Office suite of products has um, some good reminder systems and, and document storage systems. You can send it to the cloud. Um, but to Don's point, you know, certain documents you want to make sure that you keep backed up 
um, particularly if they're of a financial nature and that you have the appropriate security around um, whatever documents you are storing in the cloud. Um, from an HR perspective, you know, we're certainly concerned about employee confidentiality and employee records. So if you are deciding to store those in a cloud or store those electronically, you want to make sure that you have the appropriate uh, protection of your employee records and um, to, you know, avoid any type of uh, access to those where it's not necessary. So um, simple paper, let's dive into these a little bit more. So um, again, it doesn't have to be complicated. Cabinet storage, hanging file folders, um, those all can work. Accordion folders, it doesn't have to be crazy. Um, so the tickler system, things like your quarterly taxes or your like estimated tax payments, or your sales and income, uh, sales and use tax payments. I do find that like as time goes on, the systems that receive these things get a little bit more updated. So I know in Connecticut, for example, um, they just updated their sales and use tax platform, the Department of Revenue Services did. So they send you reminders now when you have your sales and use tax due. Um, so those types of things are helpful because it's like an automated tickler system. But, you know, the state and the auditing agencies don't really like excuses. So though they have systems that update you, you want to make sure that you also are staying up to date of when your things are due. Um, license renewals, insurance reviews and renewals um, to avoid any types of lapses in insurance. When you have upcoming payables due or upcoming bills due, who you need to call back if there's anyone that's waiting on information from you. So computer systems are a good uh, tool that's kind of like in addition to paper tools. So the QuickBooks is a really good example of that because it can store photos of all your receipts. So it takes up much less space than the paper. You don't have to use that old shoe box, you know, to store all your receipts for the year. Um, but it also has its flaws. I mean, there can be issues within the system. Things can go missing. And, you know, we just want to be careful that we're retaining, you know, what we need. Um, the computer systems can be helpful. They can be faster and easier. And, you know, you can have those accesses or access to it no matter where you are, which is really helpful and nice. Um, and I think, you know, the systems, they change. QuickBooks changes. I think when my father was a business owner, um, I don't think there was an online system of, of QuickBooks. It was Quicken and you had to buy a license every year. Um, you know, and so it, it, it changes over time, it adapts, it grows. Um, and so you wanna make sure you're adapting and growing and, and moving along with technology. And then again, just make sure that you back your files up as often as you possibly can. It's like in high school when you write that paper and then you don't save it and you go back to access it and you can't, you wanna make sure you're backing stuff up. Okay, let's talk about the cloud. So it's the internet's way to store, manage, and process data versus like your own physical computer. When we think about, you know, your laptop, your laptop has a shelf life. And so, uh, you know, it'll eventually get to the point where, um, you know, you might have to get a new computer. And then when you transition that information, you run the risk of losing documents, you run the risk of losing data. So using the cloud, it's kind of one central constant place to store your information. So cloud computing for accounting, um, there's software companies like QuickBooks. Um, there's a couple other ones that are a little bit less known, um, but the most common one I hear of is, is QuickBooks. 
Um, and again, it's not that, um, not that expensive. And what's nice is that there's not a need to buy software upgrades. You don't have to buy licenses every year. Um, you just have a constant subscription. And then it's a, a bit more secure, particularly when your computer crashes because it's cloud-based. All you need is an internet browser and you can access that data from anywhere. So I know I have QuickBooks on my computer and then I also have an app on my phone. So if I'm on the go, I can still go into QuickBooks and you know confirm payment or send an invoice. So it makes it really easy that you have access to that data from anywhere. The cloud can also, there are, there's platforms that can also store your files. Um, you know, the simplest ones are the Office and uh, three, um, Google Suites, because you can share files and documents and Excel spreadsheets with clients or colleagues. And so it allows just a central storage of, of documents and mutual access at the same time. Again, you, you don't run the risk of losing that information if you have a computer crash. You can access it from anywhere. And then it also does a good job tracking access, which is nice. Um, and it's not that expensive. So, um, you know, you can, I can't remember if, if you can do Google and it doesn't cost you much, if anything at all. And then there's, you know, different levels if you decide to go into a G Suite, but they, um, it's, it's reasonable. And if you're just starting out in business, you can keep it simple and you don't have to do anything too complicated. So when you're deciding what works best for you, you, again, you want to make sure that it works for your business. So we'll take payroll, for example. There are probably over 50 different payroll platforms that you can use. There are some of the larger ones. There's ADP, there's Paychex. There are simpler ones like Gusto, there's Paylocity, there's PeopleSoft. There's a, a thousands of different ways that you can buy payroll software. And you wanna make sure that you're evaluating it against the business needs. What does my business need and how is this software going to serve my business? That's really important. You're gonna get sold a bajillion different products and services and, and you just wanna make sure that it serves the business needs. Um, and again, there's a lot of software products that are available, counting software, spreadsheets, um, you know, a big, I feel like a big uh, record keeping platform these days are customer or client relationship management systems, CRMs. Um, and, you know, there's some larger ones like Salesforce is a big one, but you can use an Excel spreadsheet. It, you can, if you really like Excel, you can use an Excel spreadsheet. It doesn't have to be anything complicated. So again, you wanna make sure you're evaluating the needs of the business. So do you need a system that integrates your inventory and your sales? You know, so for Alicia, you have an Etsy store. Do you, you make things, right? What do you make? I basically go to Goodwills, so Salvation Armies or anything off the side of the road and I remake it. I use the decoupage technique. I'll remake shelves, boxes, furniture, anything really. And then I put it up on Etsy and I sell it there. And Etsy is really good. You can keep track of all your inventory right on Etsy. And so you, you know exactly what you have for sale. And you can even print out, you can download Excel reports. And it's mm -hmm. just, it's very handy. But you, I imagine you also need to track, you know, how much did you pay for the original item? How much yeah. did you pay for materials? What are you actually making on every single product? Yeah. 
Yeah, I, I do. I, I do add that in. So I download their reports and I add in those little fine details myself. Okay. And that's, you know, that's important too. Like you want to, how you price your service or product should be influenced by how much it actually costs you to do it. So that's a good reason why record keeping is so important because if you're not pricing yourself right, you could be losing money. So it allows you to take a, a microscope not a microscope, a magnifying glass to your business records, just to make sure that you're, you are pricing things, right? You're charging sales tax where you need to charge sales tax. You're, you know, charging for your time appropriately. Um, you know, do you need a platform that can have multiple users? Do you need multiple, uh, um, logins, uh, or is it something that only you need? Are there platforms that have a specific industry specialization? Um, so, you know, vets offices, veterinary offices, there are platforms that are designed specifically for vets offices and how they operate. So you can look and see is, is there a industry specific software or platform that you can use for your business? What are the online options? Is it online, is it cloud-based or is it um, like server-based? Is there anything else that you would, you know, that would be important to you, you think, when looking at your, your software or um, your like record-keeping software that maybe isn't covered on the slide? I know for me, like the customer service component is really important. So if I'm gonna be paying, you know, $100 a month for a platform, if I have a problem or a question, I wanna make sure that the service that I receive um, is there and available. So that's something else that you might wanna consider as you're exploring these different platforms. So um, email is another important piece of software that you're going to want to have for your business. Um, and again, it's going to allow you to keep good records. Um, so it can allow you to keep all of your client communication, um, employee communication, suppliers, vendors, contractors. Um, I know I personally use G Suite, so that seems to be this, in my, in my own personal experience, it was the simplest way for me to get a customized email, but, you know, you can go to Google and create a my business name at gmail.com and, and that can absolutely work. And even within your email system, you can keep a good filing system of emails. So, I know I keep them for each of my clients. So I'll have, you know, let's say Chelsea Groton Bank is a client. I'll have a Chelsea Groton Bank file and then I'll have, you know, payroll, employee relations, training, compliance. I'll have all these sub files, um, which help me stay organized when I'm trying to find a certain email. Um, can I just interject something right here? Yeah, um, yeah. So if anybody on the call or listening afterwards happens to be wanting to set up an LLC for their company, you absolutely cannot use your own personal email for business. Um, you can't use your own business account for that. Um, you need everything separate because an LLC is only as good as the separation you put between yourself and your business. So all of these things that Dana's talking about right now are super important because um, it's called piercing the veil. So basically an LLC is like a thin plastic shield between you and your business and you can not be held liable for anything as long as everything is separate. But for example, if you do not set up an email address that is specific to your account, that pierces the veil of that LLC and then all of a sudden you are now liable because your personal information is being pulled into business and vice versa. Yeah, that and that's a good point in terms of the separation. When you 
when you're a sole proprietor or a DBA, you know, it's kind of one big bucket. When you file an LLC, it becomes completely separate. So when I switched from a DBA to an LLC, I had to open up a brand new bank account and you wanna make sure that you're keeping very distinct records, especially from like a sales and expense standpoint, you know, what's a business expense and what account paid for it versus what's a personal expense. Um, that's all really important, especially around tax time. And we are going to be talking to an attorney real soon. So you'll be able to ask questions about, you know, what's the difference between a sole proprietorship and an LLC and a DBA and a, you know, whatever it is and ask her, her all the questions that you might have about setting those things up. But I did just want to mention it while we're talking about setting up all of these other things that if that's what you're currently doing, um, you may want to quick fix it. <laughs> <laughs> Um, all right, spreadsheets, Excel. Excel is probably, I know in my own world, it's a highly underutilized uh, system, but Excel can be so helpful to track so much information within your business. It can track your client information. It can track inventory. It can track sales. You can then, you know, do formulas and create a, essentially a P&L through Excel. You can use it to track time, your employees' times. Um, do we, I'm assuming we all know what Excel is, right? I think so, okay, good, yeah. Um, but there's there are so many ways that you can use Excel in business. Um, you can use a variety of formulas for what if scenarios, it can help you organize things, it is, a great platform. Uh, there's also accounting platforms. Like we said, we talked a lot about QuickBooks. Um, so that will, that can track your financial records such as sales, expenses, inventory, and assets. Um, it can help reduce errors in accounting um, and errors in bookkeeping. It's fast. So I know personally, all my invoicing happens through QuickBooks. So I send out all my invoices, my clients can either pay them electronically or they send me a check. And at the end of the month, it has already calculated all my sales and use tax for me. So all I have to do is log into QuickBooks and see for you know this month, this is how much I collected in sales and then this is what my sales tax should be. And so when I go into the Department of Revenue Services website, I type in my sales and then that should match up with what I collected. So it makes it much easier rather than having to manually go through and calculate all of those things. And again, it can be generally pretty inexpensive. Um, I think when you start a business, it's important to recognize that there's a lot that you're not going to know. And, you know, part of, part of really being successful is understanding when do I need to outsource something or when is it something that I can do myself? And so, you know, let's say you don't have a business degree. That's okay. There are tons and tons of tutorials and free education on YouTube. Um, if you don't have the bandwidth for it, hire a bookkeeper. Um, go on this Small Business Association's website and see what tools and resources and partners are available to them. Um, if you're uh, here in, you know, the eastern part of Connecticut, there's the uh, Women's Business Development Center. They have a ton of resources. There's um, business outreach centers. You know, there's so many tools and resources when you're starting a business and it can get overwhelming. So you just have to take it one step of a step at a time. Um, but I'm also a firm believer that like before you outsource something, you need to at least have a basic understanding of it. So if you are going to outsource your bookkeeping, let's say, that's fantastic. But at least understand what you're looking at when you are looking at your profit and loss statement. At least understand, you know, the difference between debits and credits and why bookkeeping is important. But there's so many tools and resources that you can use and, and 
look at and read as a, as a business owner, um, you know, that, that will help you understand it. We have three rivers. We have Q, uh, Quinnebog Valley. You know, there's great resources over here in the eastern part of the state that can offer trainings, courses. Um, I know I went, I'm a millennial, so I'm pretty good with technology. <laughs> I like to think I'm pretty smart, but I still took a QuickBooks class because I had never used it before. Um, and I took that through my accountant's office. They offered a $250 QuickBooks class and I learned how to better use it. Um, you know, there's so many tools and so many resources that you can use. Start now. <laughs> Don't wait. <laughs> Think about, you know, what system makes the most sense for your operations. Um, I would recommend that before you go and spend any money, that you really sit down with like a pen and a paper and say like, this is exactly what I need, or this is exactly how I'm going to organize it. Um, so that you don't get too deep and it doesn't work. Um, or this is what's important to me and this is what I wanna look at. Um, but don't wait to start to, to keep good records for your business because before you know it, you're going to be audited. You're going to have to show proof of something. Um, I'm in the process of buying a house right now as a self-employed person and they want like every dang receipt I've ever <laughs> spent on anything. They want to know where I've got all my sales from. So, you know, no matter where you are in your business and your life, there's, there's a reason behind having to keep good, good records. Start now. <laughs> so some key points to remember. Oh, with the PPP loan too, that just oh, yeah. it just came out, we had a lot of businesses that were not eligible for the PPP loan, not because that they weren't eligible, but solely because they had not kept good enough records over the years. So like they didn't have profit and loss statements and they didn't have the documentation that we needed to provide to get them the PPP loan. So um even if it's not for today or tomorrow or whatever it is, it might be for that day that it's an emergency. Mm -hmm. I know I went through recently um, in the last year or so, I did a, I worked with a PTEC counselor to get certified to do government and state contracting. And you have to get certified by the Small Business Association as a, I was getting certified as a women-owned business. And they ask for so much information to prove the legitimacy of your business. And when you have all these things and all your ducks in a row and all these things in order, it, it just made, you know, it's a stressful process, but it made it easier to have my, my stuff together. So, all right. So some key points to remember, use it, use the tool that works for your business type, size, complexity, you know, specialty or industry, um, evaluate your business needs before purchasing a software. Make sure you know what you're purchasing and you know what's important to you. And again, start now. Do not wait. Do not wait. Are there any final questions? Find yourself an IT person that speaks in layman's terms too. I think that's a that's just kind of a good general business tip. I feel like with IT professionals, they they are up here because they're so smart and they know all these things and I'm down here. And so, you know, find someone that can talk to you on that level of, just tell me what I need to do. Or, or better yet, do it for me and tell yeah. me when it's ready. <laughs> yeah. Well, thank you guys so much for being here. Um, I appreciate your time and, and hopefully this was helpful and yeah. Thank you. Yeah. Thank you so much, Dana, for agreeing to speak to everybody today. Of course. Because I think this is, you know, something that you really deal with more on the daily. All the time. Keep good employee records, please. <laughs> please. You will get audited. Thank yeah. you so much. Thank you. Thank you, guys. Thank you, everybody. And this will be made available.